Hey, book reading friends. Um, it's been a week of reading. I was really worried. Um, I said in my last video that I was worried that I was going to run into some really crappy books because last week was so good. I don't have anything to worry about. This was still another really, really good week. Um, in December is turning out to be kind of a cool thing for me. I'm not going to lie. Um, the first thing I did, um, there are three books that I read this week that were not a part of the in December readathon. Um, I participated last weekend in the Cozy Little Readathon for the 13th to the 15th. It was a little three-day thing. Um, there were just three book prompts, but then there was also two little fun bonus things you could do. You could do a 24-hour readathon from the 13th to the 14th, and then they had a challenge to build a gingerbread house and share your picture, either on Twitter or on Instagram. Um, I didn't stay up the entire 24 hours because I did have a violin recital and things to play for, but I did managed to stay up till like three in the morning <laughs> the, the the weekend of the, the the day of the 24 hour readathon so I did get a lot of reading done I was up till like 3 30 and then I woke back up again at like 8 8 30 and got back to doing other things and reading and things so I did get a lot I did get three books right in the course of the weekend one of the prompts called for you to read a cozy book something that just made you feel cozy warm and fuzzy something you knew you would love and enjoy hunkering down with for me that was Janet Ivanovich's Twisted 26 um I had been waiting for this one just came out I've been waiting for my library to get it when it became available. Um, I had my name on the hold list and was super excited to get the hold and have them tell me, it's here, it's in, you can come get it. Um, I love the books. I've read all 26 of them. I'm a huge Stephanie Plum fan. Um, I think she's the kind of person that would be fun to go get some lunch with and hang out with and just kid it with because she's kind of a walking mess and, and she seems very real and very approachable. Um, another one of the prompts in the Cozy Little Readathon called for you to enjoy a book with a winter treat. Um, I have a, a tea that I drink mostly only in the wintertime called Sugar Cookie Sleigh Ride, and it really does taste like a sugar cookie in tea form. Um, I enjoyed this one, Monstrous, by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. Sana Takeda's illustrations are just gorgeous. I mean, she's such a, such a nice job. I just love these illustrations. Um, I discovered this series. This is the third volume, um, issues 13 through 18. In the third volume, um, I discovered this series back in October when one of the prompts called for me to do a book, a graphic novel involving monsters. She is hosting this thing. So she and this are a symbiotic pairing. This is called a monstrum. It's been her trying to figure out how to make this thing behave. Um, I believe there's probably more because this didn't feel like a finished story at all. It still felt like there was a lot that could happen. Um... So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fun story. It's not a genre I normally drift to, but after I read the first one, I was drawn in enough that I needed to keep reading it. So that was my winter treat. The other prompt, the final one was a winter wonderland, read a book with a winter theme, snow or winter. I read this every year. And I said in my last video that this copy I actually picked up when we were in London this summer at the Dickens Museum, my other copy had vanished. So last year when I read it, I had to go get a copy out of the library. Um, it's only 156 pages. And if you look at how small this book is, I'm really, really picky about movie versions of the story because you can do large chunks of it exactly as it's described in the book because it's only 156 written pages. You can do a two hour movie and quote huge portions of the book. And my personal favorite when it comes to, I mean, obviously the Muppet Christmas Carol one is cute and they have to um, ease up on some of the darker images in, in the original book. Um, this was meant to be a cautionary tale, not a happy Christmas story. Um, so in the novel, The Ghost of Christmas Present has two um, emaciated children hiding under his robes, want and need. Um, that doesn't show up in the Muppet Christmas Carol version because that would just be a little creepy for kids to have to, to deal with. Um, but my favorite, like, authentic retelling would be the Patrick Stewart version of A Christmas Carol. Um, large chunks of this get quoted word for word in that movie, and I love it. Um, but like I said, it's an annual read. It fit in really well with the winter wonderland theme for the cozy little reading time so that was done on the 15th um then we were back to in december books i did arc a couple of things that didn't really fit any of the in december prompts so they were technically indie books um and i did review them they just don't qualify for anything on the indie prompts um this next book holy cow uh, i had a lot of standard setting books this week again last week was awesome this week was just as awesome and i'm super excited um, just finished one today that has me kind of reeling still like minutes ago. I finished one that has me going, holy crap. Um, this one I got from Bookish First. If you're not familiar with Bookish First, you go online to the website, bookishfirst.com. 
and you read excerpts from a novel. There's usually like three or four every week, every Monday. I think they go up. And then you read an excerpt from the novel and you type a review based on the excerpt if you want a copy of the book. And you may get chosen to get a hard copy of the book sent to you. You can choose. I think you can choose a Kindle version. I just get the hard copies because Lord knows my Kindle is full enough. I don't need any more stuff on there. Um, so I won this in the, the I, I won the right to review this for Bookish First. And so it's coming up due and it fit the, it fit one of them. I know it did. Um. Oh, released in 2019. Huh. Um, it's it, the released in 2019 prompt um, for the in December reading challenge, review challenge. Um, Shark's Edge by Angel Payne and Victoria Blue. Sebastian Shark is the standard by which all other leading male characters in a TV romance should be measured. I'm just saying. Um, he is a self-made man who owns this, this fantastic corporation and is um, getting ready to build the highest skyscraper in the city. Um, he has developed a thing for Abigail, the girl who is the caterer who provides lunches for his, um, for his company, for his executives and things. Um, obviously their relationship is not going to be an easy one to pursue. He's got business rivals who would try to destroy him and aren't above using her to get to him, um, aren't above hurting her to get to him. So, um, not a happily ever after. I don't think I'm going to get that till book three. Um, it leaves you kind of hanging at the end. You're not even sure where their relationship stands at the end of book one. <laughs> um, but to, to give you an idea of how much I enjoyed this, I went online to look for the rest of the series because it very clearly says one. Shark's Edge, book one. I knew there were more coming. I went and looked. Neither one of them was actually released yet. I pre-ordered both of them right away. Um, and just this past week, book two came in, so I can't wait. I don't think it fits on my in-December prompt, so I'm going to have to try to save that one to January, because I am one, two, three away from a coverall. So I'm going to get that coverall. I don't, the only place I can see this one fitting, I don't think it's long enough. Um, it would have to be longer than 500 pages to fit. Nope, 349 pages. So not long enough, but um, I will definitely, and I've already got the third one on order. It's just, it's pre-ordered. It's not available yet. So it's coming. Um, but that was my release in 2019 book. Um, then I read, uh, this is one, I had read this author before, um, arced a book of his, I think, called The Book of Magic, I believe is what it's called. Um, it's the, um, I want to make sure I give you the right name for it. Um, it's a series. It's the first of a series. And um, I don't even remember how I discovered him. Um, but I got the first book of his that I read. It's not the first book he wrote. Um, from somewhere online. Sorry, I'm trying to find it because I want to give you the right. Um, and the first one of his that I read. Come on. It's called Magic Book. This is not the one I just read. This is called Magic Book. Um, the Atlantic Island Divided Book One. Um, sort of a post-apocalyptic um, mess. <laughs> it's supposed to be our world many, many years in the future after um, some sort of apocalyptic event or, or dystopian type event. Um, but then I got an email from that same author. He's relaunching his Atlantic Island trilogy series and wanted to get some reading and some reviewing out there. He's also got... Um, another book connected to that that I believe is a short story collection. Um, I have a lot to read from him on my Kindle right now. Um, Atlantic Island Universe, which is an anthology of stories um, connected to the Atlantic Island. Uh, my guess is this Atlantic Island trilogy leads me to Atlantic Island Divided. So my guess is the two are not necessarily continuations of each other, but connected. Um, but this is, whoops, sorry. Um, this is my dystopian slash apocalyptic. It's not really post-apocalyptic, like you're watching the events happen. Um, Atlantic Island, basically um, part of the east coast of the United States near Atlantic City gets sheared off. And they can't really find any other land or any other people and they don't know what's going on. Tidal waves, earthquakes. Um, I can't say much more without giving away major plot points. Uh, one of the things I love about Frederick Chernoff as an author is he he paces his plot so beautifully. Um, 
jumps right into these kids. Are, it's, a, it's a bunch of high school kids. They're going to celebrate their last summer before their senior year at the shore. Um, Theo Essex is the main character, and they meet, and it's a bunch of guy friends going together, and they meet some girls on their week away. So why not? Well, then all hell breaks loose. Earthquakes, tidal waves, buildings collapsing. They don't even know if all their friends are still alive because they weren't all together when it all happened. Um, law and order sort of falls apart as looters begin to take advantage of things and they can't get any supplies because they can't reach anybody on any sort of communications device. And the electricity doesn't work right away. And yeah. Um, basically, it's it's the, the story of someone rising to power who... Um, refers to himself as a god, wants to believe that he is the supreme be-all and end-all, and his followers buy into that. And this group of teenagers has to rally um, some women and children whose husbands have been arrested for silly things like, you know, not agreeing with the leader, um, to sort of rescue them and try to overthrow this purely evil dictator. Uh, it's the first book in a series, big fat cliffhanger at the end. Um, loved it. His, his, Like I said, his pacing of his plot is beautiful. Um, I knew going in, this was a trilogy. And so I didn't want a lot right away at the beginning. And so we get some teaser moments throughout the book that make you go, Oh wait, um, I love a good plot twist. And, and he knows how to craft them in beautifully. Um, pretty action packed once the event happens, which is what they call it in the book. Um, it's, it's a pretty tense story from there to the end. Um, and the end of the book and just more cliffhangers to wait for. Uh, this was my dystopian or post-apocalyptic. I took some liberties with that because the apocalyptic event happens right in the beginning of the book. And then we start seeing the immediate after effects. And like I said, I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm guessing I could be completely wrong. So if I am, I'm sorry. Um, my guess is that when I get to the end of this trilogy, I will begin to see connections to that and the Atlantic Island Divided series I've already started, which I'll probably go back and reread the magic book and get back into it again. This next book I found as a result of all the kerfuffle that went down on Twitter, not this past week. I mean, it's still been going on. Good grief. It, the book world on Twitter has gone a little nuts these last couple of weeks. I'm not going to lie. First, we had a woman who her fans got all up in arms and started threatening people who had the audacity to say that a book about a 30 year old coach and a gymnast wasn't romance and should not be marketed as a romance book, Amazon took it down because it violated their terms of service. And her fans got all up in arms and went after some of the people on Twitter that had called this woman out. Um, I reviewed a couple of books by authors who got caught up in all that mess last week. This is another one who's taking a pretty strong stand about it. Um, she's still getting nasty little messages and things from people who are defending this author. Then this week we had a couple of reviewer or a couple of authors go nuts on reviewers and start taking cheap shots at reviewers and telling us we don't know what we're doing. Um, one of the women said, an arc is not a final copy. Peaches and arc is supposed to be pretty darn close to your final copy. An arc is supposed to be proofread, and it's not a rough draft, which is what she kept saying it was, and she's not getting good reviews on the book. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. Um, I, I actually went and looked at the, the, the synopsis for the book was just so over the top and overly flowery. I was very lost and confused. That's what the storyline even was. So I didn't read the book, but she had written this five-star review just talking crap about all the other reviewers violating Goodreads terms of service. So several of us flagged that to Goodreads and were like, uh, this isn't allowed. So, but this author I discovered as a result of all of the kerfuffle that's been going on all week long. Uh, her name is Cecilia London, the Bellator Saga, Dissident Book One. The Bellator Saga Book One, Dissident. Oh my word. Oh my word. I, this is the one I finished earlier today. And I sat there with the last page up on my iPad on the Kindle app just going, holy crap. Oh, holy crap. Um, wow. I was intrigued and maybe a little skeptical because it's political intrigue, a little bit of post-apocalyptic romance in a trilogy series. I'm not sure if it's a trilogy or not. I apologize, Cecilia. I don't remember. Um, real simply, this covered the prompt for red on my in December. Um, it gave me a bit of a go this morning, uh, this afternoon. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Um, I have never rooted so hard for a couple to make it work in my life as I do for Jack and Caroline in this book. Um, the most effective use of flashback I think I've ever seen. The very beginning gives us a more, this is what's happening right now. And then we get to see where it all started. Um, I don't want to give, I'm, I'm afraid if I start talking about it, I'm going to give away too many spoilers, but it's brilliant. There's a huge cliffhanger at the end. Um, 
the, the government of the United States has gone belly up sideways. States are succeeding from the union left and right. Um, the president, it, it, members of Congress who disagree with him just sort of disappear. Um, there, 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 there's a tyrant in the White House. Apparently that's a theme for me. Atlantic Island, the man who took over the island was, <laughs> um, and Caroline, the main character, and, and the man in her life, Jack, are major players in this. So we see what's happening to them now by taking a stand against an evil governmental power. But the majority of the story is setting up their relationship, which I didn't mind because I got enough present day flashes to know where things are going. And I really appreciate the fact that Cecilia has set up their relationship to the point that I'm really rooting for them. Even knowing that something ugly is coming down the road. And she's warned me that there's some angst coming and I didn't really expect anything less. I didn't think this was going to get happy anytime soon. Mostly because I've seen what the more modern day happenings are in the first book. Um, they don't end up where they are because things are good. Um, but I, the characters are so well developed. And this is going to sound like a really weird thing to fall in love with. But so many times when you read political intrigue books, everybody that's presented is presented as the extremist caricature possible of their political party. The conservatives are ridiculous and the liberals are over the top. Um, Caroline is a woman who really, she's, she's a Democrat. She's a, a, a congressperson. Um, she's a Democrat, but she really could just as easily have run as a Republican because she sits somewhere in the middle and has conservative beliefs about some issues and liberal beliefs about others. And so I loved the fact that she wasn't this politically extreme individual um and really a lot of the people in the book because a lot of her colleagues and friends obviously are fellow congress people um a lot of them in the book are these wonderfully reasonable people which i think in our media today we don't see that portrayed very often we don't get to see those people and i, I know they're there i know they're there um but we don't get to see people who are politically active but also compassionate and caring and humane and Cecilia London has filled this book with people like that. Now there are some that are caricatures of the stereotype um, because those people do exist. There's a reason there's a stereotype, um, but they're not all that way. Um, the main character, the, the two main characters, one's a Democrat, one's a, a Republican. Um, Caroline's father figure is a Republican. One of her best friends is a Republican. Um, so I, I love the fact that these are real people who don't make every decision in their life based on your political party. Like she's still close to people who aren't of the same political party as she is. Um, and ideologically, she doesn't even necessarily agree with the political party she is a part of down the line. Um, there's hints in the story that she might be more pro-life than pro-choice. Like she personally is very, very pro-life, but she's a member of the Democratic Party. So um, anyway, um, just a really, really powerful book. Really, really well-developed relationship. Just enough information given about where the story is going, where the arc is heading, that I know it's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, but I'm here for it. I'm here for I'm so ready to read the rest of this series. Cecilia London has stolen my heart. I have become an ardent fan in one book. Um, but that seems to be the theme of this month. Um, I, I have to give another shout out to Megan Tennant for the idea behind In December. Um, the, the, the thing I treasure about indie authors is they have to constantly keep proving themselves. They have to constantly keep pushing quality stuff out there to connect with their readers, finding their reading base, connecting with their reading base, um, far more so than I think um, authors who are well-established and going through the major publishing houses do. Um, because if your publishing house is doing all the work for you and you've written 30 books, you really don't have to do the work, the legwork to connect with your readers. Um, and I have connected with so many fantastic writers um, through the In December Challenge. So Megan Tennant, I know I do this on every video, but you rock. This has been such a cool experience. Um, and again, shout out to my daughter, uh, booktuber Margaret Adele, for cluing me in in time to let me participate this year. I found out about it partway through December last year and was really didn't have the time to be a part of it any, in, in any significant way. Um, but I'm loving it. I'm loving the experiences of connecting with authors um, and being able to write some reviews and things. I'm three away from a coverall. It is the 21st of December, and I work for the public school system, so I'm on break. <laughs> I have nothing to do until I go back to school January 2nd. So, I mean, there's some Christmas Eve services and stuff to play for, but that doesn't take much time. 
So I have a lot of time to get three books read. Granted, one of them is my book over 500 pages. So that one's gonna take a little bit of time. I still have a book over 500 pages to read, um, which I read in the Curse of the Iron Skull by C.K. Birch, second book in a series. I've read the first book already, loved it. Um, Sci-fi, I'm reading a book called Star Nomad by Lindsay Verroker. Interestingly enough, I've read Lindsay Verroker before, um, Warrior Mage, but this book comes recommended by my daughter as one of her sci-fi books. So I'm excited to read that. And for the horror book, I'm reading another one recommended by my daughter. Oh, sorry, I have four. I lied, I have four books. Um, Shadow City by Anna Maricat. And then my non-Western inspired is going to be Sonoke City by Monique Quintana. So those are the four I have yet to finish. Um, I've already started Curse of the Iron Skull. I usually have two books going at a time anyway. So I'm already about 100 or so pages into the Curse of the Iron Skull. Um, so I'll keep plugging away through that one because it's my 500 page book and then the other three. So I'm four away from a cover all and I think I can do that in nine days, 10 days, 10 days until the 31st. Um, we don't have any big plans for Christmas or New Year's. So, well, we're going out for New Year's Eve. But we have no plans for Christmas. We're going to be hanging out at the house all day. So I can probably get a lot of reading done this next week. Um, so yeah, that's where we are. Um, really, really close to finishing up all of the December. I should also say, Dissident by Cecilia London. Also, a bit, because I never do this one reading challenge at this point. I'm a nut. Um, it also covered the Cole prompt for the christmas Christmasathon. christmas Athon has two teams, Team Grinch, Team Elf. Um, I'm simply reading Team Grinch because... I like the team book. Um, I will be rereading for the team book, Stalking Decker Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, for the Christmas a thon, I need to read The Curse of the Iron Skull and Stalking Decker Ripper, and I've completed that reading challenge all the way. And honestly, the team book is an option, so if I don't read this before the end of the year, before the end of the month, I really don't feel bad because I will have read all the other prompts. Um, so that's where we are. Four books left to finish out in December. Um, starting to, I mean, it's getting to that time of the month where I'm starting to look at the possibilities for reading challenges for January. So if you know of any good ones, clue me in. Um, you can comment on them down here in the comments on this video or find me at, uh, over on Twitter, uh, mama unders, no, MJ Lau, find me there. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I don't do much books talk on Instagram, though. that's mostly other parts of my life. Um, so have a great week. If you know of any really quality indie authors that I should be checking out, comment below.